Welcome to Business Review, a daily program that delves into the latest and most significant economic stories. From stock markets to currency news, Business Review covers the most up-to-date developments in the global financial world. Police officers handed masks to commuters and bus drivers at Madrid's central train station as Spain started to ease tough lockdown restrictions that have kept people confined to their homes for more than a month and put a break on economic activity. Only a few commuters came in and out of the main entrance of Madrid's usually busy Atocha train station. Road traffic was light too, with mainly public buses passing by. Police handed out millions of masks early in the morning across regions that are not observing a public holiday, in a sign that the situation was taking a turn for the better. Some businesses, including construction and manufacturing, were allowed to reopen. But most of the population are still confined to their homes and shops, bars and public spaces will remain closed until at least April 26. The first tube of the undersea tunnel of the Shenzhen-Zongshan passage was immersed, bringing the project one step closer to undersea installation. The Shenzhen-Zongshan passage is an ambitious project that connects two major cities in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, Shenzhen on the eastern bank of the Pearl River and Zongshan on the western side. The 24-kilometer engineering feat will consist of a series of bridges, islands and tunnels and will be the world's first underwater eight-lane tunnel. The immersed tube is 123.5 meters long, 46 meters wide, 10.6 meters high and weighs 60,000 tons. In the future, it will be combined with 31 other immersed tubes to form part of the undersea tunnel of the Shenzhen-Zongshan Passage, which will be the widest undersea tunnel in the world. Huang Wenhui, chief engineer of the project, said that after the tube is submerged, it moved from the shallow water dock area to the deep area, which is connected to the sea. He added in the future, the tube will be transported directly from the deep water dock to the installation site of the undersea tunnel. In this process, water tightness is crucial not only to the installation of the tubes, but also to the overall safety operation of the whole tunnel. The Shenzhen Zongzhan Bridge will play a key role in the transportation network in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. It will reduce travel time between the eastern and western sides of the Pearl River from two hours to half an hour. As the major transportation construction project of the country's 13th five year plan and planning outline for the Pearl River Delta, the construction of the bridge aims to facilitate the industrial transfer of the Greater Bay Area and narrow the economic development gap between the eastern and western sides of the area. The Pakistani government has appealed to international stakeholders for urgent debt relief for developing countries so they can deal more effectively with the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. The country's already struggling economy has been hit hard by nationwide preventive lockdowns that have brought economic activity to a halt and caused widespread unemployment. Prime Minister Imran Khan said he was worried people in the developing world would die of hunger as a result of lockdowns. Pakistan, which is over 100 billion US dollars in debt to foreign lenders and spends the largest chunk of its budget on debt servicing, last week began a 900 million US dollars cash disbursement program to 12 million poor families rendered unemployed due to lockdowns. Prime Minister Khan said he appealed to world leaders, the heads of financial institutions and the Secretary General of the United Nations to get together to announce a debt relief initiative for developing countries. Pakistan will receive 1.4 billion US dollars from the International Monetary Fund as part of organization's rapid financing instrument to help finance the country's response to the virus. 
It is also currently in the first year of a three-year six billion US dollars IMF program to help its ailing economy. The New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, said a New York executive order will expand who is eligible to conduct antibody tests. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's top U.S. infectious disease expert and other public health experts say that widespread testing will be key to efforts to reopen the economy, including antibody tests to find out who has already had the disease and could be safe to return to work. The United States has recorded more fatalities from COVID-19 caused by the coronavirus than any other country in the world. Roughly 2,000 deaths a day were reported for the last four days in a row, the largest number in and around New York City. Even that is viewed as understated as New York is still figuring out how best to include a surge in deaths at home in its official statistics. As the death toll mounted, President Donald Trump mulled over when the country might begin to see a return to normality. Chinese Ambassador to the United States Sui Tianke said China is not aiming for political gains with its medical cooperation with other countries. Tianke made the remarks in an interview with America's public broadcasting service, which was aired on PBS, calling for a new global governance system. The Chinese ambassador also said that China and the US should continue to improve their trade relations. Tianke noted that the outbreak has eased in China, but the country is working hard to prevent a second wave of infections. The ambassador said China is fully aware it cannot succeed in this fight alone, and added that China has been helping others because it cannot be safe from the virus if other countries are still struggling. He said his country is not trying to become the leader of the world because China never believes that there should be such a role. Some countries are more powerful, more capable of doing things and should make bigger contributions. The ambassador called for enhanced international cooperation and said the pandemic is a global challenge and noted that globalization should be made more open, inclusive, with more equitable distribution of benefits for everybody. People should seriously think about what kind of global governance they should build. The ambassador called for efforts to build a better international governance system for the 21st century for the future. It should be based on mutual respect among all countries and on the full recognition of the diversity of cultures, civilizations, political and economic systems. Regarding China and U.S. relations, the ambassador said the countries are implementing their phase one trade deal and their top leaders have been in communication and added they agree it's time for solidarity and cooperation and the two countries should work together. Business Review, your daily source for the most critical financial stories. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy.